My friend and colleague Peter Half passed away on February 3rd, 2024, following a long illness. Peter was part physicist, part engineer, and part geologist. We worked together on problems in surface physics decades ago in Tom Tombrello's group at Caltech. From 1988 on, Peter held joint appointments in the Pratt School of Engineering and the Nicholas School of the Environment at Duke University. Peter was a prime mover in developing the concept of the technosphere and in understanding its impact on our planet. In this video, I'll provide some background on Peter's work in this area. In doing so, I've drawn upon an excellent UNESCO monograph on the subject written by geologist Jan Zalasiewicz, a link to which is included in the description of this video. To begin with, what exactly is the technosphere? Basically, the technosphere is the realm of technology. It includes, among other things, factories, machines, buildings, transportation infrastructure, computers, cell phones, information technology, the energy systems needed to operate these systems, the people who interact with these systems, as well as the waste products produced in the operation of these systems. How does the technosphere compare with other planetary spheres? Other planetary spheres include the lithosphere, made up of the rocky foundations of our planet, the hydrosphere, representing our planet's water, the cryosphere, comprising the frozen polar regions and high mountains, the atmosphere, containing the air that we breathe, and the biosphere, which includes all of Earth's living organisms. All these other spheres have been in existence in some form essentially since our planet was formed some 4.6 billion years ago. Though the biosphere has been in existence since the formation of the planet, it was not until the 20th century that scientists began to understand that it was not just the mass of all living things on Earth, but it included the interaction of that mass with the air, water, and soil that sustain organic life and with the sun's energy that largely powers it. More than the sum of its parts, the biosphere interleaks and overlaps which, with other spheres of the Earth while having its own dynamics and emergent properties. The technosphere is similarly complicated. It comprises not only our machines, but also the various social systems by which we interact with technology. It also includes the domestic animals that we grow in enormous numbers to feed us, the crops that are cultivated to sustain both them and us, and the agricultural soils that are extensively modified from their natural state to carry out this task. A primitive technosphere has been present throughout human history, but for much of this time it only included isolated, scattered patches that were of little planetary significance. It wasn't until the start of the Industrial Revolution and the rapid growth of human population that followed that the technosphere really came into existence. How big is the technosphere? Scientists have made crude estimates of the mass of the technosphere that include its physical parts, including buildings, and surrounding infrastructure, agricultural land, and waste materials from the operation of the technosphere, and have arrived at a total of about 30 trillion tons for the current weight of the technosphere. An enormous amount of fossil fuels have been burned since the start of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century in order to power the technosphere and that has contributed approximately 1 trillion tons of carbon dioxide to our atmosphere. The technosphere requires an enormous amount of energy to maintain its operations. Almost all of the biosphere's energy comes from the sun, and some of the technosphere also is powered by solar energy and other renewable resources 
such as wind energy and hydroelectric energy. But most of the energy that powers the technosphere comes from burning fossil fuels, oil, natural gas, and coal. These non-renewable energy sources were amassed deep in the earth over hundreds of millions of years, and we are expending them in just a few centuries in order to produce the electricity needed to operate the systems of the technosphere. Humans have used power sources such as water mills for millennia, but the enormous burst of energy now needed to power the technosphere is on a completely different scale. One estimate suggests the humans have collectively expended more energy since the mid 20th century than in all the preceding 11,000 years of the current Holocene geological epoch. The consumption of that huge amount of energy has had consequences for our climate, which is warming faster than at any previous time in the history of the planet. The biosphere is extremely good at recycling the material it is made of, and this facility enabled it to persist on Earth for billions of years. The technosphere, on the other hand, is poor at recycling. Much of the plastic and metal waste from the technosphere operations does not easily degrade and will remain in our environment for centuries or longer. Some of this trash, such as discarded cell phones, will end up becoming so-called techno-fossils. Likewise, the greenhouse gases emitted by the burning of fossil fuels remain in the atmosphere for decades to centuries. There is no single triggering event that led to the emergence of the technosphere. However, because of his background in physics, Peter Half was able to identify scientific events that have had a major impact on the development of the technosphere. The first was the development of quantum mechanics in the early 20th century. This was a crucial step in understanding the physics of molecules, atoms, and the nuclei of atoms. Eventually, this also led to the invention of the transistor in 1947. The invention of the transistor led us into the digital age in which electronic computers have become ubiquitous. And in turn, that transformed human interactions with information. Now, a large fraction of the information that humans interact with on a daily basis is expressed as a collection of binary bits, ones and zeros, various computational devices ranging from smartphones, which in reality are small handheld computers, to tablets, to personal computers, to the fastest supercomputers on the planet. While the vast majority of humans have little or no understanding of quantum mechanics, it nevertheless has had important consequences for the technosphere and its development. What does the future hold for the technosphere and thus human inhabitants of the technosphere? In his work, Peter Half emphasized that humans are not so much creators and directors of the technosphere as they are components within it. And therefore, they are constrained to act to keep it in existence because the technosphere keeps most of the current human population alive through the supplies of food, shelter, and the other resources that it provides. Clearly, Peter Half's contribution to our understanding of the technosphere were impressive, and he has left us much too soon. To honor his memory, I urge you to think about how you are interacting with the technosphere and what you can do to make it sustainable.